Right, uh, well good afternoon everybody. My name's Tom Hughes, as Suxon's already introduced, and um, I'm here today to talk to you about public perception of nuclear energy, and uh, particularly why it's so negative, and perhaps how we can make it a little more positive in future. Um, so I'll tell you a tiny bit about myself first. Um, I graduated with a degree in mechanical engineering from Lancaster University. Um, I've worked a little in the aerospace industry and at the moment I'm on the EDF Energy Graduate Scheme, uh, started in September. Um, so you might question whether uh, me working in the nuclear industry uh, gives me a kind of uh, warped view of nuclear perception and issues. Um, and I don't believe this to be the case because I think that working in an industry such as this uh, gives you a real insight into just how safe and how thorough and how conscientious nuclear professionals are. I experienced the same thing in the aerospace industry where working at Airbus really made me understand just how safe flying is and the lengths that engineering companies like that go to to ensure that everything is correct. Um, so, this brief presentation is non-technical, which you may be delighted or uh, disappointed to hear. Um, and it aims to really identify some of the reasons behind the largely negative public perception of nuclear energy at the moment and uh, explain some ways in which those perceptions could be turned around um, by improvements in the way in which uh, the industry uh, behaves and communicates. Um, so I'd like to begin with a little of the negative imagery the general public tend to associate with nuclear energy, uh, starting with uh, wind scale or cell field site. Um, Windscale was the site of the Windscale fire in 1957, which was the first major nuclear incident and really the first demonstration of the potential dangers of splitting the atom. Um, and Southfield, of course, brings us on to the issues of nuclear waste. Um, it's clear from my interactions with the public um, that, uh, and also kind of looking at the, the, the information that's readily available on the internet, that really uh, there are very few who understand uh, the real nature of uh, quantities of um, disposal routes for uh, radioactive waste produced during power generation. Um, and it's not really that surprising given that our industry does still tend to be quite secretive about that information. Um, so continuing on the topic of secrecy, this is a little uh, jokey uh, one on the left. <laughs> um, since the security scares of 9-11 and 7-7, um, our nuclear power stations have become sealed off, really, from the public eye. Um, visitor centres closed, public tours ended. Um, and this really has kind of severed valuable links between uh, stations and the communities in which they operate. Um, indeed, just driving past this site, you'll see a big red sign on the way in that says, Visitor Centre Closed, turn around now. I wonder what kind of message that's maybe sending to someone who is interested in the nuclear industry. Um, I wonder uh, scale can be overstated and, and misrepresented, um, particularly in the largely unregulated world of, of the internet media. Um, indeed, in my Google search for these images, um, some of the top hits were of hideous defamations and frankly ridiculous animal mutations that anyone with a, with a bit of scientific knowledge could know and, and see you were not realistic. Um, but of course there is no denying the, uh, the poignancy of, of images like this from the, the ghost towns surrounding uh, the area, uh, which I think should serve as a continued reminder of the potential dangers of nuclear power. Um, which brings us on, of course, to Fukushima. Um, now, given the unprecedented scale of the humanitarian disaster in Japan, it was quite surprising to see the, the, uh, how much time was dedicated in the media to the events unfolding on Fukushima Daiichi's uh, boiling water reactors. Um, it just goes to show the public and media distrust of nuclear energy, um, that so much coverage would be given to a situation in which minimal harm, certainly in comparison to the, uh, the, the natural disaster, was caused. Uh, but again, it's easy to see things from the other point of view, uh, looking at images like the hydrogen explosions or the uh, radiation monitoring of the area's children. You can understand why there is such strong interest. So what can we do in the nuclear industry 
and the scientific community uh, on, on a wider scale do to overcome uh, the negativity and regain public support for nuclear energy and particularly with regard to new build programs which obviously a lot of us believe are the way forward and indeed the only way forward in our future energy mix. Um, now I believe that much improvement can come from breeding and continuing a culture of honesty, openness and objectivity as well as greater engagement with communities and uh, clearer provision of technical information. So I'll talk a little more about positive things. Um, now one thing I think nuclear sites should consider is, is breaking down the boundaries between the general public and nuclear sites through the reopening of things like visitor centres, public tours, viewing galleries. Um, most stations when they were built had excellent facilities to cater for this kind of thing like the viewing galleries and briefing rooms and I see, I can see reasons why we don't have these anymore but I think it is well worth promoting them as the worthwhile and informative tourist attractions that they could be once again. Um, I don't think this would require a vast amount of spending, obviously there are security issues with this, but I would urge um, stations and nuclear sites to, to get back on that uh, train. Um, secondly, uh, I think there are strides that we can make in uh, the quality, quantity and clarity of information that's freely made available, particularly via sources such as the internet. Um, now, whilst virtually all employees on a nuclear station know uh, very clearly the way in which it operates and, and the safety features we have, um, very little of this confidence and competence is actually kind of passed on directly to the public. Um, they're kind of testing and things like that. I believe the government is also to blame for failures, uh, for example, to commit to a clear waste disposal strategy that is put out to the public, um, but that's a whole other story. Um, with regard to the undeniably destructive events at uh, Chernobyl and Fukushima, um, I think it's important to point out the differences and the very large differences between these plants and our own. Um, certainly one of the main failings at Chernobyl was the safety culture, um, which was almost non-existent, um, with a serious lack of understanding really in the control room of and across the plant of, of the technology and, a, and also a badly flawed reactor design. Um, it's a far cry from the safety culture we have in operation across the UK and across Europe um, and indeed across the world where safety is always put ahead of profit margins and um, it seems using our, our more recent reactor designs that such a catastrophic event is almost impossible. Um, looking to Fukushima, uh, despite the unprecedented uh, strength of the earthquake, uh, the plant did behave as expected initially and shut down and it was only the resulting tsunami, again way beyond the realms of expectation, um, that took out backup power supplies that the problems really began. Um, of course there are many lessons to be learned from that disaster and things we can do differently in future, but uh, it seems rather unlikely that a nuclear plant would ever be built on such a seismically sensitive area again. Um, I think it's vital that the public be made aware that all the plants in the UK are seismically qualified to way beyond the strongest earthquakes we could expect to uh, see in this country. And our ge geographically stable location, um, our plants are also a more modern and inherently safe design than either the RBMK or, uh, which is the reactor that was used at Chernobyl, or the, the early generations of BWR as, as were used at Fukushima. Um, finally, a bit of self-promotion there on the left, um, are, uh, and I, for me the most important point actually, and the one I've seen do the most good in my limited time in the industry, is engaging with the scientists and engineers of the future. Um, not just regarding the nuclear industry, but about the sciences in general. Um, with so little scientific content and interest in the public domain, um, particularly media targeted at school aged children, um, I think it's every one of our responsibilities as scientists to ensure that we strengthen our ability to progress and develop new technology um, and in, in the same kind of pioneering spirit that put a man on the moon that's flown passengers at the speed of sound and that's harnessed the awesome power of nuclear energy. Um, I, I think we can only ensure this kind of progression by um, engaging with children whilst they're still in the position to make choices like their GCSEs, A-levels and university subjects. 
We had to try and steer them onto the right path by studying STEM, STEM subjects, that's science, technology, engineering and maths, um, at, the very, and at the very least stimulating some understanding and interest in the importance of science and engineering in everything that we do. Um, I've seen time and time again that it doesn't actually take much to achieve this. I think it's important uh, to continue and expand these if for nothing more than the selfish reason that I want my children and their children to live in a world that continues to be made better with technology. Um, and that's about the end of my presentation. There's a very brief summary of my key points there. Um, I'd just like to thank you for your attention and uh, your questions are uh, welcome. minutes for the question, so you can bombard Thomas with uh, any questions you have in mind. Um, yes. Firstly, congratulations on the Thank you. Um, you've heard a little, particularly locally, about the fact that uh, some parts of the environmental lobby are turning towards the fact that we can actually do good things. It's a very good point and it's, it's a point I've mulled over myself that really people who are ardently uh, supporting green movements ought to be embracing nuclear power as an excellent way to get away from uh, dependence on fossil fuels. Um, with regard to how we can help spread that message to the wider green uh, community, um, I think it's, it's really through things like better engagement and, and clearer information. Um, I think some of the, the key concerns of, of the Green Lobby are, are very valid and it's only through really talking very honestly and very openly about exactly what we do about things like nuclear waste or in response to um, things like Fukushima or Chernobyl and just the way we handle day-to-day -day operations of the nuclear plant. Um, I think that's the best way and preferably actually get them 